and uh, deliver payload. Now, on this first mission, the way we're going to get there is on a Athena 2 rocket, which you can't see here. But it's just a standard commercial rocket, you can imagine, that gets you into orbit. Now, from there, you need to get from orbit to a, a path to the moon. And for that, we use uh, what's called a Star 37 engine. So it's a solid motor, which, once it's activated, puts you in a ballistic trajectory straight towards the moon, which means you're going to get there one way or the other. The trip will be probably about three days. Once we get close, we're going to activate the second uh, motor here, the Star 24, and that's going to do this break or slow you down to a, a relatively slow velocity. We'll get rid of that maybe about a couple minutes before landing and take the rest of the way on this lander. And this lander, what it's going to do is as it's coming down very close to the moon, it has from uh, some satellite images, it has a good estimate of what the, what the moon looks like on where we want to land. And so it's going to take that image and try to match it to the, the moon surface itself so that it could come down exactly where we want it to land, which is maybe about I want to say about three kilometers from Apollo 11. Once we land, and I'm going to walk this way now. Um, we'll do a system checkout and make sure all our different components work. So we'll make sure our, communi our communication should be working throughout. Uh, we'll make sure our cameras are operating as expected. We'll kind of do a warm up, make sure everything's working. We'll drive around the lander to kind of image it, and we might have some sponsor logos on the lander, you can imagine. <laughs> uh, you might have uh, different things just on the lander, or just around that you want to investigate before you keep on going. And so we'll start there, and then we'll start driving about 500 meters. As soon as we hit that 500 meter mark, we now cash in our first revenue, which will be a $20 million prize from Google. <laughs> But we're not going to stop there. Once we pick up that prize, we're just going to keep on going, driving to the Apollo 11 site. And so the goal here is when we get to the Apollo 11 site, we don't know what, it's, what happened over the last 40 years. We don't believe the flag even exists there anymore because cosmic radiation will destroy it. Uh, we also don't believe that... Uh, uh, we don't know what happened to the metals and the other components there. With all the footsteps... There might be a tenth of micrometeorites right in that footstep. And so one of the things you need that's really important to space agencies is just how many micrometeorites do you get over a 40-year period? Because we know from Apollo that those are fresh steps. Now you can look at it and see how many small little holes and how big the holes are. And that's a really good data set that uh, NASA and other space agencies are interested in, and which would sell back to the space agencies. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Tell now, to get <laughs> there, looking and free. I'm yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. Is that an app or is that jail? Jail broke. Alright, so to get there, we have this uh, operator interface. So, what you see here is a few things. This is the camera. Uh, point of view from the robot. And so, if you may notice, the robot might be hard to use, but might be looking different or that way or whatever way the purpose depending on the computer. And so you need to be able to figure out when you're filled with you you are actually working. And so that's what this team does up at the top here. Down here is the actual image from the camera, so you can see a little bit of people in, the, in that image right now. And then on the left here is how you actually control the robot. So the green is the path that the robot has traveled so far. The red is where you're commanding it to go. All these are in meters, so if you think English units, just bear with me for a little while. Uh, but you want, in this particular instance, you want to go roughly two meters forward and three meters to the right. And so you point that spot, you tell it how fast you want it to drive, and then you go ahead and hit the send command. And you can go forward, reverse, or turn in place. Those are all options. Now, of course, if something goes uh, uh, bad, you don't want to hit the e-stop. But one thing to keep around on the moon is there's a long delay. So it's a long, just line of sight. If you're just uh, a particle of, of, of uh, light and you went from the Earth to the moon, it'd take you 1.2 seconds. 
However, because there's electronics on either side, the lag is more like three seconds each direction. And so even if you have to eat stop, it's six seconds. Like the moment you see something and you hit the e-stop, it's just six seconds to be done. And that's one reason why we try to keep it relatively slow. So the robot is moving now. You can see that everything moves relative to the robot. And uh, you can see that it's trying to get to the various points. So that's, this is a little bit of the user interface. Let me go ahead to the next display now.